Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Christmas for Carol, a suspense play starring Mr. Dennis Day. Hey, Hap. Well, hello, Santa. What? Why, it's Wilcox. Now, what are you doing in that costume, Harlow? Going to a Christmas party, Hap. Oh, what's in the sack? Why, a load of merry motoring. In this box, I've got smoother performance, you see? Ignition engineered auto light spark plugs. Sure, and when you replace worn out spark plugs with these new Bantam beauties, your car will perform smoother than Santa skidding down a slippery chimney. And what's in this box, Harlow? Fast starts, Hap. Well, these are ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, too. You bet. And they're unmatched for quick starts because they're designed by the same Autolite engineers who designed the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition system for many leading makes of our finest cars. That's why ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs work as a team with your car's ignition system. And that's why they're world-famous for quality and dependability. And I suppose you're giving gas savings in the third box, eh, Harlow? You guessed it, Hap. So, friends, have your Autolite spark plug dealer replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Choose either the standard or resistor type. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Christmas for Carol and the performance of Dennis Day, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense! It was dark and silent. The window in the house glinted a little from the Christmas tree lights. Rocky didn't move. He just stood there in the alley, but I wanted to run. Fast, get away and put it behind me. Just a second. We got the money, Rocky. What are we hanging around for? Come on, let's get out of here. I said we wait for the old couple to get back. What for? Why take chances now? We got some money. How do we know it's all of it? Maybe they split it and put it in two places. We'll wait here and watch for them when they come in. They'll tip it. It was 8,000. That's what he withdrew. You asked for this, kid. Now, do as you're told. We wait. I couldn't help being scared. This was my first job, my first and last. I just wanted that money. I wanted it fast and short, and I wanted to run away from it and forget it. A one shot. That's why I got hold of Rocky Perea. Lucky. I had to be lucky just this once. For Carol, not for me. It was for Carol. Nothing else I cared about, see? It didn't seem possible now that three days ago I hadn't known Rocky, hadn't needed him. What is it, Doctor? How about the baby? Your wife must remain in bed. Serious? No, not serious, but she's got to stay flat on her back. A a nurse. You should have a nurse with her all the time. Oh, but it's two months away, Doctor. It's just a question of keeping her relaxed and quiet, not letting her do any work around the house, lift things, or even walk. Okay, okay, Doctor, and she'll be all right? Uh, There's one other thing. Uh, She was quite worried when I told her about the nurse. I I got the feeling she's well afraid to have the baby. Afraid? Not for herself. I can't put my finger on it, but... It's having a detrimental effect on a condition, and I... I know what it is, Doctor. Money. Oh, I see. Well, it might not be easy finding a nurse only four days till Christmas. I'll get one, Doctor. Thanks. I'll call you this evening. Yeah. Thanks again, Doctor. Sweetheart, it'll be all right. I'm going to get the nurse to take care of you. I'll be able to get up and around a day or two. Not if you want that, son. The doc said everything will be all right if you take it easy, and you're going to take it easy. But a nurse... Look, I've got to get back to the bank. I'm only on my lunch hour, sweetheart. I'll make a few calls from there, and tonight we'll pick out the nurse. How... How much do they charge? What's the difference? How much, Paul? It's a lot of money, I know. Fifty, sixty a week. We'll make out all right now. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, Paul... This was going to be a happy Christmas now. Yeah, a happy Christmas in this dump. It's funny, Paul. Fifty dollars a week for a nurse for another two months. It's funny. You make forty-eight fifty at the bank. You'll have to pay the nurse more money than you earn. Yeah, more money than I earn. You know how it is being a bank teller. 
feeling, seeing, handling money, taking in money, paying it out. When I went back to work, I was seeing it for the first time with something more than a detached feeling, thinking, I need this money, I need this money, I need this money. How I need this money for Carol and the baby. It was almost three o'clock when Eddie the bookie came in. Hi, Paul. Aha, uh-huh. good day yesterday. And big action in a few days. Santa need opens. Yeah, people like to throw their money away. They throw it, I catch it. Eddie, uh, could I see you later? You ready to make a deal? I want to talk to you. What time you through? Five o'clock. Meet you outside at five o'clock. Eddie Garth, bookie. He quit school in the seventh grade. I held out and went through college. And all these years, he's tried to get me to go in with him. To run his office, do the book work. He was waiting for me when I finished work. We went to a coffee shop and sat down. And all around us, the loudspeakers reminding me what a happy Christmas it was. How's Carol, Paul? Not so good, Eddie. That's, that's what I want to talk to you about. Nah, no more loans, Paul. You need money? Come with me. Don't you ever give up. What's so good at the bank? 25 bucks for a Christmas bonus? Look, Eddie... Come in with me, now. With Santa need opening. I could work the outside, get new accounts... Eddie... And I'll give you 10% of those accounts, Paul. But I won't lend you the money. I'd be a sucker to lend it to you. I'll give it to you if you come in, but I won't lend you anymore. Okay, Eddie. Forget it. I'll get it some other way. I don't get it. What's wrong with my deal? Look, Eddie, how many times have you been rousted by the vice squad? Plenty. And every time they book you and they fingerprint you and take your picture. So what? They never have anything on me. It's on your record, Eddie, as long as you live. Ah, sure, I need money. Maybe I'm getting close to the time when I'm not too choosy about the way I get it. But it won't be your way. What? What are you talking about? If I ever break the law, it's going to be with the right guy and it's going to be the right job. Are you dreaming, Paul? You'll still be in that cage ten years from now. I'd hit and run. One job with enough out of it to make it worthwhile. That's the way to be, Eddie. A one shot. There is no such thing, Paul. You do something like that, you're stuck in it. And you're worse off than if you came with me. Think about it, Paul. Go home then and fix dinner for Carol. All the time thinking of the money and Carol and the baby and debts. The worry eating at me and thinking about what I'd said to Eddie. Then the next morning, old man Forbes made a withdrawal. The first he'd ever made... Hiya, son. What? Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Forbes. I'm going to miss you, son. Seems like we're good friends after all these years. Miss me? <laughs> Take a look at the slip. Mm, that's a lot of money. Twelve years hard work. That's what that money means. But you're taking it all out? Yeah, and I quit my job today. Quit your job? Ada and me, we've been waiting a long time for this Christmas. We're moving out of the city. Oh? And uh, we've had our eye on a little farm. Now we can buy it. You've got the papers drawn up. Then you're you're leaving right away? About a week. But Ada don't know yet. I'm going to surprise her. Kind of a Christmas present. But it's not safe to keep so much cash on you, especially well, I've if... got a perfect place to hide it, son. No one would think to look there. Besides, I figure I've worked too hard and too long to lose it now. Oh, no, son. It wouldn't happen. Wouldn't seem right somehow. stayed with me and it grew, like a wheel spinning, gaining momentum. This could be the right job. Eight thousand dollars, enough for that single shot. It stayed with me, all the time growing, growing. Yeah, lunch is on me, Paul, if you change your mind. No, I called you, Eddie, because I, I need your help. What kind of help? Well, you can arrange for me to talk to someone. Maybe. Who is it? Rocky Perea. Rocky Perea? Are you kidding? You picked yourself the right guy, all right. The cops don't even know what he looks like. They never mugged him or printed him. Yes, Eddie, that's right. You're crazy, I tell you. A million people want to talk to Rocky Perea, including the cops. No. No, Paul, I can't touch it. You can, Eddie, if you want to do bad enough. Please, Eddie. All right. I'll see what I can do. Maybe I do know someone. And Eddie... It's got to be soon. You know you'll be taking a chance. It better be good. It is, Eddie. Good enough to take the chance for. That was two days ago. And this morning, Eddie came through. A certain friend, Rocky's only outside contact, told him to keep an eye on a house on Hoover Street. 
And he gave me all the dope, what Rocky looked like, how he'd act, what to expect. And earlier this evening, I told, told Carol I was going out for a while, that I'd, I'd borrow the money from Eddie, and we wouldn't have to worry about paying it back for a while. That's what I told her, but that wasn't the answer. The answer was at the house on Hoover with Rocky Perea. I waited there, hidden in the dark corner behind the incinerator. I kept thinking, making excuses. It wasn't up to me anymore. It wasn't any other choice. I needed money, desperately. I needed help to get the money. I waited more than an hour. And then I heard footsteps come up the alley. He stopped before the open patch of light. Just like Eddie told me. He was careful. Very careful, making sure no one was staking him. I took a deep breath and hitched my weight forward. I was going to cut across the open for the back door. I remember thinking, now, do it for Carol, for the rotten, miserable Christmas. Do it now. Rocky! He froze for a split second, and almost faster than I could see, he ducked into a shadow and spun around. The streetlight didn't touch him. He glinted on something metallic in his hand. And even from where I was standing, I could see he had a gun pointed at me. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Dennis Day in Christmas for Carol. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Hap, are you going to the in-laws for Christmas? Yes, Harlow. Oh, it's rough. No, they're okay. Oh, I mean rough trip, unless you've replaced worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. They give your car sensationally smooth performance. I've heard of them, Harlow. Well, then you must know that they're designed by the same Autolite engineers who design complete ignition systems, used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. That's why ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs work perfectly with your car's complete ignition system. The folks really treat us right. You mean the Autolite spark plug dealers, eh, Hap? Well, they'll replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs for smoother performance, quick starts, gas savings. After we visit them, we always find... Find what, Hap? That you're always right with Autolite, Harlow. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Dennis Day in Elliot Lewis's production of Christmas for Carol, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Rocky, don't shoot. It was a good thing I'd said it. His gun was aiming front and center. He crouched there looking at me, his eyes flat and hard, and then his voice deep and tight and deadly. Who are you? I'm not a cop, Rocky. Come close so I can see you better. Sure, Rocky. I just want to talk to you. You call me Rocky. You been talking to anyone? I've been watching you. I know you're Rocky Perea. You've been watching me? What for? You're wanted, Rocky, and you need money. Who are you? Where'd you come from? That doesn't matter, Rocky. This is a business deal. I figured it out very carefully. You need money, well, so do I. And I got a way to get it. Just like that, eh? And Rocky, I'm not staying. This is a one-shot deal. A one-shot? There's no such thing. That's the way it's got to be. We do this job together and we're through. We never see each other again. I sure ain't gonna go looking for you. But you won't quit. Not if it comes off easy. I'll quit, Rocky. What's in this for me? Half. Four thousand dollars. Huh. Well, kids, you ain't dumb by any means, staking me out like this. Almost smart enough to be a copper. You got guts, too. Tell me, you got a family? There's uh, no one to stop me. I have a job that doesn't pay enough. This will raise my salary. You want this one haul, then it's back to your job, eh? Yeah. Is it a deal? What's the job? I have a car. I'll tell you on the way. If you go for it, okay. If not, we forget the whole thing. Okay, kid. I'll listen to it. Let's go driving. I told him what I'd planned and why I needed him And he agreed to come with me We drove to the Forbes' house It was a small and old house Just big enough for the two of them I drove down to the corner and parked And we started back 
lucky there's no one on the street. Let's go up the alley. Yeah, Rocky. There's the back door. Look, no lights. They're not home. Oh, that makes it a cinch. Okay, go on, second. It's your baby. Rocky, I'll have to break a window. Yeah. You want me to hold your hand? I'll wrap my jacket around my fist. That'll keep the noise down. Why don't you write me a book? Okay, okay, I'm going. I was lucky. The side of the house was hidden from the street by a big tree. And there was light to see with from the Christmas tree in the living room. I wrapped the jacket around my knuckles and with a short, sharp jab broke through the window. It sounded like a cannon. The street being so quiet before, I was scared it would rouse the whole neighborhood. Like I said, I was lucky. I scrambled up the sill and dropped into the living room. I was pretty clumsy. I pulled out drawers, looked behind pictures, under cushions. I went in the kitchen and poked around the cabinets. I looked in the cookie jar and I found a rolled up wad of bills. It was money, all right, but only $40. The old lady's secret treasure. I put it back and went into the living room again. Looking around, nervous, I stumbled on the Christmas tree and knocked it over. And then I remembered what the old man had said. A Christmas present for his wife. And I knew it was somewhere on that tree. There were Christmas stockings and favors and little red boots in and around the tinsel and the lighted bulbs. And I found the $8,000 hidden deep in one of the stockings. Got it, Rocky. Let me see it. It's there, Rocky. It's all there. Yeah, eight grand. I guess I'll hold it. Come on, let's go. Take it easy. I'm going to stick around for a while. Stick around? What for? Well, we got some money. How do we know it's all of it? Maybe they split it and put it in two places. We'll wait here and watch when they come in. They'll tip it. It was 8000 That's what he withdrew. You asked for this, kid. Now do as you're told. We wait. I couldn't help being scared. My first job. My first and last. A one shot. I wanted to get away fast, run and put it behind me. But Rocky just stood there, like he didn't have a worry in the world. <laughs> Listen, kid. They're ringing for us. They're wishing us a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Wait. There they are. They're unlocking the door. You know, Harvey, the Christmas services were so beautiful. Sure were. This year in particular. Harvey, huh? look, the tree. Someone's been in here. A burglar. Burglar? Oh, my cookie jar. I've got my house money hidden there. The old lady ran to the kitchen, but Forbes knew where to look, and he knew it was gone. Rocky was grinning. His face lit up like floodlights. Let's go, Rocky. We've seen enough. No, no. Hold on a minute. It's all here, Harvey. I wonder what he was after. Ada. It's gone. All the money. All what money? Eight thousand dollars. I took it all out of the bank. Ada, I, I, I quit my job. It was going to be a surprise. No. Every penny we had in the world. Oh, Harvey. All that money. No, no, no. It'll be all right, Ada. Oh, Twelve years you worked so we could have something. Well, I can keep on working, Ada. I'll, I'll do it all over again. Oh, you can't work anymore, the doctor. Oh, what's a person to believe? You work so hard and we do without things for 12 long years. And for what? In one minute, some good-for-nothing hoodlum takes it all away from us. I looked at Rocky standing there next to me, his face split by that grin. It was funny to him, something to laugh about, to gloat over. That's why he'd stayed. Suddenly I knew I couldn't go through with it. Me, the guy who needed the money so bad, the guy with the bright one-shot idea. Quite a show, eh, kid? Come on, let's go. He moved off a few steps, but I just stood there, knowing what I was going to do. Come on, I said, let's go. Knowing what I was going to do. No, no, Rocky, we're not going. Huh? I said we're not going, and neither is the money. What's that? Don't, Rocky. I've got a gun, too. And what's got into you? I'm going to give that money back, Rocky. I I can't stomach this. Give it back? You're crazy. No, Rocky. I just didn't see deep enough. Oh, people like this. This was your idea. I ain't responsible for it. I know, Rocky, but I can make it right. Suppose I don't give you the money. Then I'll kill you, Rocky. Okay, kid. You got the gun. He 
gave me the money, all the hate showing in his eyes. I turned, started for the house. I gave him my back for a target. But he didn't use it. I knocked on the door. Yes, who? Paul, from the bank. I, uh, I just had a fight with a guy, Mr. Forbes. Saw him jump from your window. I chased after him. Our window? You saw him? Yes, ma'am. I was walking past. I kind of figured he'd just finished robbing you. Well, did you catch him? Well, I couldn't hold on to him. He, uh, he broke away, but not before I got this. Why, Harvey, the money. Yes. Oh, Paul, bless you. Oh, forget it. I'm only sorry I couldn't hold him. Uh, you, you say you fought with this burglar? Yes, uh, he broke away we, before... We want to thank you, Paul. Forget it. I'll, I'll be going now. Oh, wait, Paul. We want to give you a reward. Oh, no. No, I don't want a reward. I'll, I'll have to be going. I stopped there on the porch for a minute, afraid to go back to Rocky. Suddenly, terribly afraid of what he'd do to me. The old couple was still talking, loud, like old people do. Yes, it, it, it all happened so fast. Wonder about that boy. What made him bring the money back? He's honest, Ada. I, I know him from the bank. Oh, fiddlesticks, Harvey. He didn't fight with anyone. What do you mean, Ada? Well, his clothes, by the whole story he told us. Your young friend took the money in the first place. Why, I... I Ada, I, I believe you're right. Of course I'm right. Now, what on earth made him change his mind like that? It's Christmas, Ada. Merry Christmas. She'd known. The old lady had known all along. And it didn't make any difference. Why, but she'd offered, even offered to give me a reward. Suddenly I felt something strange, like, like being clean inside. Like being able to see something that wasn't there before. And the tightness, the fear eased a little. Now, let's go, kid. The car. Rocky. You did what you wanted. You just forgot that half of that money was mine. Now move. Get it moving. What was it you said? You need me, Rocky. You're hot. Rocky, I, I made I... a mistake. I want to team up with you, Rocky. You need money. I got away. I was wrong. Maybe the next job you won't get soft in the head. There's not going to be a next one, Rocky. I'm through. Through? You think I spent Christmas Eve with you because I like you? I'm out four grand, I'm kid. sorry, Rocky, but there's not going to be a next time. You think so, huh? Stop the car. All right. But I'll never see it different, Rocky. I found out tonight. If it's not these old people, then it's someone else taking it just as hard. Are you sure? You sure it's not Christmas doing this? I'm sure. It's not for me, Rocky. Huh. You know, I'm kind of glad it turned out this way. You what? Well, you're through, ain't you? You're going back to your job. Yeah, Rocky, sure. Good. Then I figured it right. What? I didn't think you'd go through with it. Say, wait a minute. Yeah? You're not Rocky Perea. <laughs> I said you were a smart kid. But the way you acted, so careful, sneaking in the alley and... Say, who are you? Weissman's the name. Police Lieutenant Richard Weissman, gangster squad. You're a cop? But where's Rocky? We picked him up this afternoon, kid. He had a couple of guys working with him, and I thought maybe you were one of them. Now I know different. Cop... I don't expect I'll run into you again, kid. So take care of yourself. And uh, Merry Christmas. Lucky. All the breaks. But I was no better off than this morning. There was still money, two months paying the nurse. There was still the worry for Carol. Oh, Mr. Shane, we've been expecting you. Congratulations. Doctor, what's the matter? Why? <laughs> Nothing's wrong. Quite the contrary. Your wife just had a baby. Baby? Carol? Oh, she's perfectly all right. So is your daughter. Carol. Oh, Carol, darling. Are you all right? Hello, sweetheart. I'm fine. Carol is... is... We won't have to borrow the money now, Paul. It's turned out for the best after all. Oh, darling. And it always will, my dear. 
We have so much, you and I. We have each other. And now we've got a daughter. A fine, healthy little girl. The rest will come, Paul. Let's live the day we have. Your little girl's over there, Paul. Tell her we're very, very happy she's in the family. And wish her a Merry Christmas. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Dennis Day. Santa visits girls and boys after they've been good, but Autolite keeps cars and trucks performing as they should. (laughs) Right you are, Hap, because Autolite makes more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment, on many leading makes of America's finest cars. Electric windshield wipers, starting motors, voltage regulators, coils, distributors, wire and cable, generators. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And because all Autolite parts are original factory parts, you can be sure you're right. Because you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Cornell Wilde, a star of A Ring for Maria. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Mickey Rooney, Ginger Rogers, Eve Arden, and Ezio Pinza all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Christmas for Carol was written for suspense by David Friedman. Dennis Day appears through arrangement with Colgate Palmolive Feet Company and may be heard on his own program, A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Cornell Wilde in A Ring for Maria. This is Harlow Wilcox again. On behalf of Autolite, its 96,000 dealers, and the cast of Suspense... I extend to all of our listeners best wishes for a Merry Christmas. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.